Hi everyone, it's Daddy here from Angel Handmade Papercraft. Today I thought we might do a live colouring. So um, yeah, here we are. I'm, I'm going to be talking as I'm going. It is going to be a very long video, so I do apologise. Um, and I wanted to just let you guys know um, sort of what's been going on and why I haven't been posting very much. So um, I'm still having a lot of issues with my ankle at the moment, so we're still trying to get all of the pain and stuff under control. Um, it is what it is, I guess. Um, they've diagnosed it as uh, chronic regional pain syndrome, so by the sounds of it, it probably won't be going away even after I have my next surgery. Um, and yeah, so I've got... I did have three torn ligaments, that's how it started. Um, I had surgery on those and then since then I've now done the tendon in the same ankle. So they've got to cut one of the tendons to fix the other tendon. Um, and that's going to be sort of February, March next year. So we're on the waiting list for that. So, um, and the other thing is I sliced my hand open <laughs> pretty bad um, a couple of weeks ago. So that's been pretty painful as well. And I'm right handed, so um, it's looking a lot better now. So, all right, let's get moving on what we're actually here for. So, as I said, we're going to be doing a live coloring. So let me just clean all my mess off. I haven't thought any more ahead other than I'm going to do a coloring video. So I've got these images on my desk um, that I had printed out previously that I had not had a chance to color yet. I don't have any markers out, so it's literally going to be going on the go, picking colors, etc. So I've decided to color in this little uh, dragon here. Um, he's one of the Dudley images from Dustin Pike. I will have all of the links below the video, etc. Um, I will also keep a list of all of the Copic markers at the end of what I have used. So let's get started. So I'm thinking I'm going to do a green dragon. So I'm going to colour using some of my YGs and my Gs. So I'm thinking YG13, YG, um, G14, and we just need something to give that little bit of darkness. So let's go G09 and see how that goes. All right, so let's get started. So we're going to start by coloring. I always use my lightest color first, um, and then I go in and do my, um, so yeah, lightest first, then I go darkest back to lightest. Depending on how I feel, occasionally I will go in and map out all of the darkest areas with my dark green first, um, and we might actually do that today. So this G marker is um, quite liquidy i don't know if you can see that doesn't matter how much ink i put in or don't put into this marker i have not refilled it for a very long time but it's still very juicy so to prevent those big drips or gloops of ink coming out i'm going to take off both ends which will equalize the marker and that will prevent those big globs so you can already see now it doesn't look as juicy because it's already equalizing so both markers heads off let's go through and mark the darkest areas so obviously this crease in his nose is going to create a bit of a shadow. The inside of his nose there, the underside of his nose. Obviously his nose is in front, so it's going to create a shadow there. We're going to create a shadow here. I am no perfect colorer, so please don't send me any horrible comments saying you know, you're putting your darkest areas in the wrong place, etc. I do it my own way. I'm happy with how it turns out. That's all that matters. And yes, for those of you that are questioning, there is the occasional person that has to send through a comment just because they feel like they can't help themselves. And yeah, as I said, it is what it is. So we're going to do that one. And just so we can add some color into his face, I'm just going to add some dark in here as well. Today is a pretty special day in our household. It is my, my youngest son's 13th birthday, so we are now a teenager, which is pretty exciting. So we went out today, our barber shops have opened back up, so I took him in for his first um, haircut after COVID lockdown. You know, he's had his mum haircuts, but, you know, it was the the cut line and, you know, all those sort of things that the boys love to do at the moment. Grabbed some ice cream cakes for dessert tonight and invited the parentals over and all that sort of stuff. And, yeah. So 
who's in his room in a class at the moment. We are still homeschooling at the moment. They officially go back to school next week. Okay, so that was the GO9. I've now moved on to my G14 marker. And I'm just colouring as I'm going and starting to blend all of that in. So normally I just grab the edge of the previous colour and start pulling that out into the image. This is um, Express It Blending Card. I've printed the image out using my brother laser printer. It is a digital stamp. I'm not sure if this one comes as a rubber stamp. I will confirm that when I do all of my linkages. And I am a page turner, so I do apologize. This is the way that I color. <laughs> You probably don't notice as much in my other videos because they're all edited out but this one is going to be a live coloring I'm going to load the coloring only and then when I get the card made I will go in and add a second video with that on it and I wasn't going to color his I don't know if they're called antlers on a dragon but whatevs um, but I've just realized that I have accidentally done the one on the other head and the other ear so we are going to add that in as well. Yeah, that's what colouring is all about. Colouring is all about you know, making things work. Okay, so now we're going in with our YG13. This will be our final colour. So we are now pulling all of that colour out and finishing that whole area of where we were colouring. So you should now start seeing a nice smooth blend from one colour to the next and bringing them into the lightest areas. So working my way through. You can see little areas like this where the colors just come out of the lines a little bit. I will fix all of that up with a zero blender. Um, when I'm finished colouring. Right, so it's starting to pull all of this colour out now so we can get that nice blend. Just working on all of the smallest areas first and just here underneath his hand will also create a little bit of a shadow that is my puppy I do apologize the baby gate is closed so she can't get into the craft room so we just need to move that otherwise she's going to be crying through the whole video She's now sitting under my feet and being totally adorable. Okay, so now we're going to go start moving on to his head. realize that I've just missed all of this.
Right, and just down the side here, there's a small amount of his body there. You're not going to get a lot of colours in there, so we're just going to add just a small amount of colour. Alright, so now, so we have used, again, we're going to go through that again, so uh, YG13, G14, and G09. So that's the three colours that I've used on the main part of his body. And now we're going to be doing an orange pumpkin. So now we sort of need to work out what colours we're going to add into. Oh, sorry, buddy. I nearly ran over my puppy dog. Um, what colours we're going to use. So I would like to add some sort of purple in. So maybe some VO4, 6, and 9. And. So we then do a red cape that would look awesome I think so let's go with that so we will go uh, uh, 17 uh, 39 and maybe some R29 so we're gonna try that for the um, cape so let's work on the cape first so we're going to do the same thing. We're going to go in with the darkest marker first. So obviously in here is going to be dark across the back of his neck here. And then it will start to fold out here and go dark. So we go in here around his teeth will be bright, will be dark. And as you go up there. Now, as you come down here, it will darken out quite a bit. And then on the other side, so around the bat. And as it drops down, and then in here will be the dark area. And then, of course, up there where you've got your crease. Right, so I'm pretty sure that is all of it. Oh, and we've got there's a small bit under there, so I'm just going to go in with the darkest red there because you're not going to see much of it anyway. All right, so then we'll go in with our middle red, which will be the R29, and then we're going to start pulling that color out. They're very small areas, so if you do only have sort of two red markers, you can certainly make it work. And if you don't have all the same colours that I do, you can put together your own blends. You don't have to use exactly the colours that I have used. Um, I normally just wing it. I don't have any way of, you know, making a choice as to what colours I'm going to use. I just go with what I pick up. If it doesn't work, well, then we use something else and try and blend it out a little bit. Okay, and then we finally go in with our R17, and that's our final colour. So now we're blending everything in together and having them meet in the centre. So we're working our way through, pulling all of that colour in and making sure that we don't have any major blending lines because that's what I really don't like. Alright, so that is his outfit and this part here should also be in red so we're just going to go back and do the same thing again. So you're going to go under the side there, middle colour, pull that colour in and then back to the lightest and pulling that down. Okay. Hmm. I'm not 
not sure if that piece there is part of his outfit or if it's part of the pumpkin. I'll have a think about that one. Now we need to decide on what colour we're going to do there. So I'm sort of thinking the purple but then I'm wondering if that's going to be too much. Maybe I should go with more of a yellow and then maybe we can do a purple on his spikes or do the yellow on the spikes as well. And we can have a look at some yellows and go from there. So we're going to go 11, 13, and let's give it the 15 and maybe go 17. So 11, 13, 17. So we'll just move these purples to the side for the moment. And we'll move our reds over. Oh, running through those again. So R17, R29 and R39. Okay, so... Y11, Y13, Y17. So let's go with the Y17 first. Now these aren't very large areas either, so I'm going to go in with the darkest one first. And just adding a small amount of colour. And we're going to do that as well. So we'll go in there. Underneath his head obviously will be a bit darker. Underneath the bat. And that's our puppy dog barking in the background. Okay, next one will be the Y13. So we're working our way down in the colours. And working our way, blending that out as we go. And then finally down to the Y11 and pulling that colour all the way to the edge now. And all the way through. So I think that's it. So now we're going to move on to the pumpkin. So again, Y11, Y13, Y17. And now the pumpkin. So for the pumpkin, we're going to go uh, YR18, YR19, YR20, and then I'm going to go in with a dark color and I'm thinking E19. That'll give us the dark areas of the pumpkin. So let's start with the E19. So always all the way around the top of the pumpkin is going to be a dark area. So we'll go in first and map all of that out. Okay, underneath the cape there. Remember what I was saying about the juicy marker? This is another one. Look at that. It's just very close to dripping. So I'm going to equalize it by taking the other end off. Give it a few seconds for that to soak up. And look, magic. And I was able to save my image before anything leaked on it. Alright, so now around the nose... We're going to add some darkness around there, add some darkness around the eyes. Okay. it. Ok, 
Okay, and then we'll go down. So we're going to go down to the YR18. So we're now starting to pull out more of the oranges. So just working the way through, giving that a nice blend. So I'm just working my way around the image there and pulling all of that colour in. Okay, and then finally we will go in with the lightest colour and now all of that needs to be blended. So I'm going to go around the smallest areas first and pull all of that colour in. Oh, sorry guys. Hello. One second. Sorry guys. Logan, can you come grab the phone please? Hurry up, I'm doing a live colouring. <laughs> Alright, so pulling all of that colour through. These are all the birthday phone calls coming through from my little mister who turned 13 today. I'm just going to go back, these areas here all need to be dark. Now I just need to make a decision on some of the other colours. Just going through my Copics here. I don't know, I don't know what colours to do. I need to make a decision of what colours to do. Thinking for this, um, we're going to finish this pumpkin here. I'm pretty sure that's pumpkin. So we'll go in and make that pumpkin. Um, 
And the last couple of things that we need to do is just uh, doing the teeth and blending those out and I just need to colour that bat that's on him there. What I was thinking was I actually might turn that into a necklace. So I'm just going to grab my Copic multi-liner. So this is the 0 0.1 and I'm just going to add two strands to make it into a necklace. Yeah, I like that. And I'm just going to go uh, W8, W10. Where's my W6? There's my W6. So 6, 8, 10. Now, I don't want this to be too dark. So I'm just going to go in and just add a very small amount of the darkest. Trying to very carefully blend that out. The difficult thing when you're colouring with um, any dark colours like this is losing all of those details. So I'm going to try and blend it out as much as I can down to the lightest without losing. Which that's actually not too bad. Try to show you that up close. You can still see all of those details in the little bat. Okay, now I need to finish this pumpkin off. I think the inside of pumpkin, I've never eaten it, I don't make it, I don't buy it. <laughs> I'm pretty sure the inside of pumpkin is actually lighter. So I'm going to grab one of my lightest YR markers. So this is the 12 and I'm going to go white 12, wow, 12, 14 and 18. So I'm going to drop that E19 marker that I used on the rest of the pumpkin. And I'm just going to move these to the side as well. So that again, W6, W8, W10. Okay, and so we'll go in with the YR18 because that's going to be the darkest. And we'll start mapping that out. And that is my washing machine finished, telling me that I need to come and hang it out. And I still haven't finished the outside yet either, which I'll come back in and do shortly. And as you see across the teeth is going to be a lot darker. So white R14. So we'll just start blending that down. And now with this outside piece, the YR14 was the lightest marker. So we're going in and pulling all of that out. And then... I may need to go back in and add some more of that darkest marker on those areas because it looks now too light. So this is the inside of the pumpkin, so that's all going to be that light orange. And so back to the E19, so we're doing the outside of the pumpkin. So I'm just going to go back in and just add some more darkness. And on these pieces here as well, because obviously we need to differentiate between the outside of the pumpkin and the inside of the pumpkin. Okay, and YR14. 
All right. So he looks pretty darn good if I do say so myself. But what I'm thinking oh, is in these divots here is adding some more darkness. Just so, again, just differentiating between that outside area and the inside area because it still looks a bit too light. Fourteen, and then blending all that through. So I'm just doing a messy blend now. It doesn't need to be anything because there's so much color there now. It's all going to lay down together. All right. So I'm going to do some light gray onto his eyes, and then I'll blend that out with the zero marker in a moment when I've got that out to fix the other areas. And a little bit on his teeth. And now we still haven't finished the pumpkin because I still haven't done all of these areas yet. So this is the outside of the pumpkin still. And I'm going to pretend that was cut from the outside even though there's no way you'd be able to do that because it's such a small area but I think it'll look good that way okay and then this will all be that small inside pumpkin the lighter pumpkin I should say not the small all right so then we're going to drop down to the YR14 Just the inside that'll be the inside of the pumpkin so we're just going with the lighter of the YRs and pulling all of that color in so I'm pretty happy with the way that's turned out we just need to add some grass on here and then finish that to zero so now we're finished with the E's so for the dark area we went E19 YR18 YR14 and then on the lighter area, so anything that's cut from the inside of the pumpkin, we went, we dropped the E19, and just did YR12, YR14, YR18. So we'll just pop those all to the side. Okay, so lucky last, we just need some grassy green. So we're going to go G28, and maybe it's only a small area, so maybe just G07. Okay, so. We're going darkest to lightest on this one. See, I'm already confusing myself. Okay, and then we'll blend that out using that lightest color. Okay, and now the G07. So I'm just flicking that through. And I will also add some underneath the pumpkin. So we're just gonna go with the uh, G28. the G07 all right so that is pretty much it I'm just thinking what I might do is just literally under the pumpkin is just go just a tad darker and I'm not gonna blend it so just the under the pumpkin part only Beautiful. All right, so I'm happy with that. 
um, as I said, just that zero marker. So that's my zero colours blender. Just now fixing up any areas that may have bled a little bit outside. So I'm just literally pushing that colour back in. I normally just use my finger just to stop it from making too much mess and it will dry it quickly and stop it from bleeding into anything else. Okay, so uh, that's in his finger just there. And then I'll just pull that colour down off the teeth and off the eyes. All right, now the last thing that I, oh, let's do that, sorry, uh, zero and T2 and G07 and G28. Okay, now I'm just going to go in with a white gel pen without running my puppy over who's sitting between the baby gate. So I recently purchased some no white gel pens. So I normally use the white Uniball Signo gel pens, which I'm very happy with. But my local stationery shop started stocking these Jelly Roll pens. So this is the Jelly Roll 10 and they are absolutely beautiful. I can see this one has a little bit of dry ink on it though. I'm just going to clean that off because I don't want it to wreck my image. And I always warm up my white mark white pens um, by just scribbling on a little bit of my hand. Now this battery is just about to die so I'm just going to quickly go in and add some details into my pumpkin because I love to add details. It just makes an image, I think. So hopefully I'm getting all of this on camera. If not, I'm talking to myself, so it's all good. All right. All right, so my video camera did die, so I do apologize, but I finished him up with the white gel pen, um, added all of those extra details in, and it makes such a big difference when you add, you know, little bits and pieces here and there. So it is all complete. Um, I will have a full list of all of the Copics that I used, but, you know, if you want to take a screenshot, this is the ones that I've used. Um, but I will, as I said, put them all at the um, on the blog post so you can check it all out there. And yeah, I thank you all for watching and I hope to see you all soon. Bye.